Hello everyone, this is Richard with the Modern Healthspan newsletter. Happy New Year to everyone, and thank you for your support this past year. We are very happy to go on this journey with you. First, a disclaimer. In this newsletter series, we will share the latest research studies and news and events in Healthspan field that we have found interesting. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. Our channel just passed our first year anniversary, and by coincidence, two days ago, the world's oldest living person had her 118th birthday. This is Ms. Tanaka Kane from Fukuoka City, Japan, born on January 2nd, 1903. She is recognized by the Guinness World Records as the world's oldest living person. Ms. Tanaka is said to be in good health, eating three meals a day, exercising and doing arithmetic. She loves chocolate and surprisingly fizzy drinks, which include beer and cola. Coca-Cola has sent a personalized cola edition as a celebration. She says her goal is to stay healthy and live to 120. We have a couple of papers that we felt were interesting this week. The first of these is this one, entitled Subacute Toxicity Study of Nicotinamide Mononucleotide Fire Oral Administration. As a note, subacute means between acute and chronic. The authors note that there has not been any evaluation of subacute toxicity of NMN. Here they studied it in mice and beagle models. In case you do not know what a beagle looks like, here is one. They are quite cute. In the study, they fed mice with NMN in water, either once per day or twice per day for seven days. And for the beagles, it was once per day for 14 days. They then examined the liver, kidney and blood serum of the animals after the test was complete. In terms of the amount of NMN they used, we can see that in most mouse trials, the amount is be between 100 milligrams and 500 milligrams per kilogram of body weight per day. In Dr. Sinclair's classic 2016 paper, he used 100 and 300 milligrams per kilogram per day. Here they used 1,340 or 2,680. As they say, the dose was well tolerated with no deleterious side effects. However, at the larger dose, they saw an increase in alanine aminotransferase in the serum. Alanine aminotransferase is also known as ALT, one of the markers on a standard blood test. So far, we have not seen any major effects on this marker in our blood tests. For the dogs, they noticed an increase in creatinine and uric acid. As mentioned in our recent 12-month report, we are seeing an increase in our uric acid, which may be due to our NMN. The conclusion is that the short-term taking of NMN, even at high dose, had mild or minimal deleterious effects. It's also interesting that they see a quick improvement in blood lipids and insulin sensitivity from a short-term high-dose course of NMN. They conclude that NMN is safe and their study provides a possible dose range for humans. Here is our second paper, which is a systematic review of whether exercise can act as a senolytic and reduce senescent cells. The review includes both human and animal trials. Here is a discussion from the review. Despite the limited number of studies, the evidence on the senolytic effect of exercise on senescent cells in humans and animals appears convincing. A higher level of physical activity and exercise training decreased the level of P16 in humans, where P16 is a marker of senescent cells. Interestingly, they found the effect only appeared in obese animals, not healthy ones. They did say that this may have been due to the difference in the way the studies were conducted. And the conclusion is, more studies. There are some senolytics on trial at the moment, but this points to another way of controlling your senescent cells. Next is the event corner. The first event is a longevity roadmap documentary series hosted by Dr. Mark Hyman. It is from January the 13th to the 20th, with a total of eight episodes. Here are the topics of the eight episodes. It is free, but you need to register first. Another event is also a documentary series, Live Longer, Feel Better. It's online and free from January the 18th to the 27th. Some of the guests are Dr. McCullough, Dr. Greger and Dr. Jockers. And finally, my blue light blocking glasses have arrived from Amazon, which cost about $20. I'm going to try wearing them in the evening to see if they make my sleep any better. I think they're worth it just for the coolness factor. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you found the newsletter informative. As we find more interesting research and longevity news, we will release our next newsletter.
so please stay tuned. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell button and select all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.